All right, I know a lot of people wonder what we do with all of our spare time. Uh, Kelly's cutting out some pieces for the sharpening kits. Got ourselves a, a new sewing machine. So that's kind of my section. Here's where Kelly's sweatshop used to be. Having a sharp knife will really extend the life of your career. And hand sharpening a knife will extend the life of your knife. So anyway, for those of you that have bought our knife sharpening kits, and those of you that are going to, we really thank you and hope they serve you well. We're here in Cody's shop, and this is Mr. Pear Brask, great great grandson of Eric Frost, founded Frost Knives in 1891. Yes. And uh, Pear made his first knife on his own, he was nine. Then uh, started in the factory, he was 19. That was what, 1972? 40 some years ago? You guys can do the math to figure out how old he is. <laughs> We're fixing up a GoPro, and so we can see how that all goes together. And he's going to sharpen a regular kitchen knife with one of our sharpening kits. This is a new strop, and so Pear is loading, loading up the leather with it. Okay, so we have Pear working with the uh, fine diamond on this kitchen knife. You notice how he's holding the knife very steady and keeping the angle of his diamond going just right. And as long as your diamond can score glass, it still has diamonds on it. Yeah, this knife this knife was abused. I didn't give you an easy one. <laughs> Wouldn't want it to be easy. Goes from the fine to the super fine. But, but once you get to a point where it's quite dull, then it requires uh, kind of a rebuild. There's the strop. With a strop, it's important you only use it one direction. As soon as you drag it back the first time, it's no longer a usable strop. And you can sharpen any knife with a high-speed buffer wheel. It's really fast, uh, allows you to do this with a lot less hand work, but it is a little bit hard on knives. Don't go too hard on a buffing wheel because it gets hot. There. On the bright side, you wear your knife out pretty quickly. So Adam uses a buffer wheel and he's a good customer for the Chris Gregory knife. Yes. So, so I do encourage, I do encourage the use of a buffer wheel. You Cody, sell, you sell buffer wheel kits. <laughs> Cody was always such a natural at sharpening knives, and he used to make a lot of money from students by sharpening their knives. Uh, and you use primarily what Scotch Brite? I use a Scotch Brite followed by a buffer wheel. Yeah, but of course he does it pretty, pretty tenderly. So how's that going, Pear? Not quite well. Yeah, this one is pretty good for your kitchen. Very sharp now? <clears throat> All right, well that is sharpening 101, and I'm going to sharpen a hoof knife real quick. Thank you, Pear. Thank you. <laughs> How's everybody like me in a, in a ball cap? Thanks. So <laughs> this is, my hoof knife has been well abused, and uh, really, you're not going to shave nothing. You're not going to, I abused it on purpose for this particular video. So I'm gonna to have to do a total rebuild on it and I'll start with my file. I like to hold it on my leg and push into it. So I'm gonna keep one steady motion there and try to use that angle. Now one thing you can do if you're a new to sharpening is if you'll color the edge with a marker, then you can see if you're getting all of that off at one straight line. And if you're doing it in the one spot, then you'll get all that marker off pretty easily. And you can hear how hard that file is having to work because I'm removing so much material. Now back here, I'm gonna push flat and again. Okay, so now this, when I first started shooting horses in 1987, that would be considered a sharp hoof knife and you'd just go to work. My, my fine diamond, and I'll just do the exact same move that I did with that file. Really, I, I go four strokes one direction and then I go four strokes the other direction. And you won't believe how fast you'll get at this. Your first few times was very frustrating for me as well. I just didn't feel like I had the knack for it. And then I finally decided, you know, you can learn how to do this too. 
just because you're not natural at it doesn't mean you can't become good at it. So I decided to, and with Pear's help, I was able to finally start getting some sharp knives. And I'll move to my super fine. Sounds a lot different, and that's happening because I'm using a smaller diamond. And I'm going to load that leather. Now I find in the early stages of a new strop that I'll load it like that a few times and I'll scrape it with the back side of the blade. And all I'm trying to do is get rid of those hairy fibers, basically the big pieces of the leather on this veg tan, veg tan leather. Okay, so now it's ready and I'm going to push it four times that direction, four times this direction. And I'm doing it on my leg. My, my strop is going flat. I have turned the hoof knife so I can achieve that angle. All right, so that's sharpening 101. Let's see if we achieved a good result. Bunch of knives, because I'll be all bald. There we go. So whenever it takes your hair off that easily, compared to what it was a minute ago, that's a nice sharp knife. Be all bald. There we go. So whenever it takes your hair off that easily. Okay, we're uh, Cody's going to finish up our demos by sharpening with a Scotch Bright. This Scotch Bright has uh, been there and back. It's been there. That's the curse. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Scotch Bright to do the initial rough cut on it, and I'm going to be looking for a nice even burr all the way along the backside of this knife. As you can see, this knife has been used and abused and not sharpened in a long time. I prefer whenever the wheel is turning away from me. Um, I can see a lot better, as you guys will be able to see in the video whenever we get over to the buffing wheel. On this one, the way the grinder is mounted down, I have to work with the wheel turning towards me. So I'm going to hold everything real close to my body. That allows me to get solid and stay consistent. And I'm going to run back and forth nice and slow. So again, I'm going to get nice and tight. I'm going to pick my angle. I'm going to start it here at the, the, towards my handle. And I'm not going to push this as hard as I can. Just a nice steady pressure. And I'm going to come all the way into my tip. Okay. And you can see here where we're getting a nice even buff all the way to the tip. So what I'm feeling for when I do this is my burr. You can kind of see a burr starting at the tip there. I want that burr to lead all the way up there. So I can feel there. I've got a nice burr. You can even see it at the tip. I always find the best way to feel for a burr is run your thumbnail right up to it and you'll feel it catch if you've got a nice burr on there. Okay. And then you have two buffing compounds or three? What do you I have? I have two buffing compounds. I don't know where that one came from, but it's there. I've got... I've got a white rouge and I put that on my white wheel. I have a wheel dedicated to that and then I have my black rouge. Now black rouge is going to be a rough cut so that's one I'm going to start with to get rid of my burr and then the white rouge is just going to buff it up and get it sharp. Now I have this grinder as a freestanding unit and what that allows me to do is it allows me to stand on this side of the, the opposite side of my switch and has that motor rotating away from me. And the reason I like that is as you can see right here, I can see my edge a lot better here than I can here. So we're going to start, we're going to turn it on. And I'm going to start by applying some rouge to both wheels. Just that way we're ready to go. And uh, apply it to my black wheel. And I'm going to start and I'm going to work from the, again from my handle to my tip. And everything's solid, everything I can do. If I can find a place to brace it, I'm going to brace it. So on this, I'm going to brace right against my motor and I'm going to start and see how I can see where my, my blade is. I can come around. All the way through my tip. Okay. Again, I'm gonna hold tight to my body, create, brace it against my body, and I'm gonna push just light, just light enough that the wheel action conforms. If you push on this wheel, it will, it will conform away from the blade. So I'm gonna push just hard enough that I can get it to a, a flat, edge is what I'm looking to do, okay? 
So you see right there, I'm pushing just hard enough that wheel turns to flat versus, and if I push any harder, it'll actually come up and put a round edge on my blade. So just barely gonna push against it. I'm gonna come all the way through my tip. Now I'm gonna do that all the way till my burr edge is gone. Right wheel. I like to start on the back edge first. So again, just real lightly, and you can see the polish that I'm gonna be able to get on this with this white lead. I'm only gonna polish half of it, and you can see the difference between there and there, the white, the white polish did. And again, I'm gonna make it all the way through my tip. Important to note here, Cody's knives are sharpened at an extremely sharp angle, which means that they'll be very, very sharp, but they won't hold the edges long. 23 degrees has been about ideal for everyday work, but if you're going to a contest, and he's won a national title, as well as the Cape Well Cup using these knives. And that was done by having a very, very sharp knife. So it shaves no problem? No problem. So that is a gorgeous job. Well, Cody, thank you very much for your time. No problem, happily. Hopefully and now we'll have a, a full video on how to sharpen a knife. Good deal. Well, folks, we make these sharpening kits here in the Heartland and they're for hand sharpening any knife, not just hoof knives. We use them primarily for hoof knives, but they are excellent for fillet knives, kitchen knives, butcher knives, hunting knives, pocket knives, anything you want. So we can kind of make them to order, but the things that you need to sharpen a knife really well are a fine diamond, a super fine diamond, a file if you have to do a rebuild, the strop, and you just load it down with the jeweler's rouge and then we put it together in these leather kits you can get one of these kits from heartland horse school for eighty dollars or you can get it with any two knives for 170. anyway thank you all for watching this video i hope you've learned something about how to sharpen a knife if you have any questions you can email me at anvil at earthlink.net or go to heartlandhorseshoeing.com y'all have a great day